that's okay. I didn't know. Just it's better to clarify it so we know what's going on, right? Yeah, right. And have it pop up on you. They can see us. So. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. I've got my eye on it. Somebody's confused. This chair, so I was waiting a quick second. Are you okay? Okay. The chair will now call the November 7th, 2023 meeting of the City Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's go. Can you please call the roll? Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Williams. Here. Alderman Rockford. Here. Alderwoman Purchase. Here. Alderwoman Notriano. Here. Alderman Carlson. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Busher. Present. Mayor Busher, a quorum is present. Thank you. Can I get a um, motion to allow Alderwoman Conley to participate on so the moved. phone? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderwoman Conley, it is fine for you to join in on the phone. Civility pledge, in the interest of civility, I pledge to promote civility by listening, being respectful of others, acknowledging that we are all striving to support and improve our community and understanding that we each may have different ideas for achieving that objective. The chair will now entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the October 24th, 2023 City Council meeting and so approve moved. the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The motion carries. The chair will now entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the October 24th, 2023 special city, city council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved, Mayor. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in, in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. The chair will now entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of the remaining ordinances into the record of this council meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The motion will carry. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. 
The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this council meeting. So move, Mayor. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion will carry. The chair will now entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So move. move. Second. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> Any discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, aye. please say no. The motion will now carry. Agenda items 2023-430, 2023-431, 2023-432, 2023-433, 2023-434, 2023-435, 2023-436, 2023-437, 2023-438, 2023-439, 2023-440, 2023-441, 2023-442, 2023-443, 2023-444, 2023-445, 2023-446, 2023-447, 2023-448, 2023-449, 2023-450, 2023-451, 2023-452, 2023-453, 2023-454, 2023-455, 2023-456, 2023-457, 2023-458, 2023-459, 2023-460, 2023-461, 2023-462, 2023-463, 2023-464, 2023-465, 2023-466, 2023-467, 2023-468, 2023-469, 2023-470, 2023-471, 2023-472, 2023-473, 2023-474, 2023-475, 2023-476, 2023-478, 2023-479, 2023-480, 2023-481, 2023-482, 2023-483, 2023-484, 2023-485, 2023-486, 2023-487, 2023-488, 2023-489, 2023-490, 2023-491, 2023-492, 2023-493, 2023-494, 2023-495, 2023-496, 2023-497, 2023-498, 2023-499, 2023-500, 2023-501, 2023-502, 2023-503, 2023-504, 2023-505, 2023-506, 2023-507, 2023-508, 2023-509, 2023-510, 2023-511, 2023-512, 2023-513, 2023-514, 2023-515, 2023-516, 2023-517, 2023-518, 2023-519, 2023-520, 2023-521, 2023-522, 2023-523, 2023-524, 2023-525, 2023-526, 2023-527, 2023-528, 2023-529, 2023-530, 2023-531, 2023-532, 2023-533, 2023-534, 2023-535, 2023-536, 2023-537, 2023-538, 2023-539, 2023-540, 2023-541, 2023-542, 2023-543, 2023-544, 2023-545, 2023-546, 2023-547, 2023-548, 2023-549, 2023-550, 2023-551, 2023-552, 2023-553, 2023-554, 2023-555, 2023-566, 2023-567, 2023-568, 2023-569, 2023-570, 2023-571, 2023-572, 2023-573, 2023-574, 2023-575, 2023-576, 2023-577, 2023-578, 2023-579, 2023-580, 2023-581, 2023-582, 2023-583, 2023-584, 2023-585, 2023-586, 2023-587, 2023-588, 2023-589, 2023-590, 2023-591, 2023-592, 2023-593, 2023-594, 2023-605, 2023-607, 2023-608, 2023-609, 2023-610, 2023-611, 2023-612, 2023-613, 2023-614, 2023-617, 2023-618, 2023-619, 2023-620, 2023-621, 2023-623, 2023-624, 2023-625, 2023-627, 2023-628, 2023-629, 2023-630, 2023-631, 2023-632, 2023-633, 2023-634, 2023-635, 2023-636, 2023-637, 2023-638, 2023-639, 2023-640, 2023-641, 2023-642, 2023-643, 2023-644, 2023-645, 2023-646, 2023-647, 2023-648, 2023-649, 2023-650, 2023-661, 2023-662, 2023-663, 2023-664, 2023-665, 2023-666, 2023-667, 2023-668, 2023-669, 2023-670, 2023-671, 2023-672, 2023-673, 2023-674, 2023-675, 2023-676, 2023-677, 2023-678, 2023-679, 2023-678, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 2023-679, 
Yes, I was asked uh, to prepare an amendment that essentially grandfathers in anybody who lives outside of the city uh, when they're hired during this moratorium or who moves outside of the city during this moratorium. So anybody who has a residence outside of the city while this moratorium is in place will be grandfathered in when it is lifted um, based on on this uh, based on this amendment. Who sponsored that ordinance? Uh, the the um, amendment was proposed by Alderman uh, Donnellan based on our discussion at the okay. committee of the whole meeting. That's correct. So we're on discussion for the amendment right now. Any other discussion from the council on the amendment? Are those of you signed up to speak for the amendment or for the ordinance itself? Ordinance, ordinance or amendment? Um, I could speak to the amendment. I thought you also mentioned a timeline, or maybe that was Alderwoman Conley. It's actually Alderman Carlson, who's on his way here right now. So okay. if he gets here, we'll add it. Any other discussion on the amendment? We're going there first. Mayor, if I can. Oh. Yes, Alderman Donnelly. Unless I didn't push my oh, button. So Alderman Notran, are you done? On I the mean, amendment. <coughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <coughs> Mayor, just briefly, I, you know, I brought this up at the Committee of the Whole, my concern about, you know, obviously if the moratorium were to go into effect and people were to be hired and we didn't have some kind of grandfathering clause in there, what would be the point of having a moratorium? Because the logic of having a moratorium is attracting people, greater masses to come and apply for certain jobs. And and uh, I thought this was important to make it clear and not scare people off that, which is the intent of trying to attract people that normally wouldn't come here. So really that simple. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, and uh, on, uh, I guess this is part of it. Uh, right now in first reading, we got a 2023-521. It's uh, basically making a make it a preference for someone that lives in the city over someone that say does not live in the city uh, proper for hiring um, is there is there a reason why that can't be part of an amendment for this as well instead of being a full-fledged ordinance or because what that'll it's to me it's all the same I mean if it has to wait if we have to wait we can do that but <laughs> that could be Alderwoman Conley, then we'll let Corporation Council speak. Oh, go ahead, Alderwoman Conley. If, if I could, um, and, and thank you, Alderman Hanauer. I, I appreciate that might be something that we would want to uh, add to the moratorium. My, my, my thought with proposing that as a separate standalone ordinance is that the moratorium itself is not a reversal of the residency requirement. It's a pause for right now. So I'd like to have a more have that. Springfield residents hiring preference be part of a, a permanent part of, of our, our hiring practices as opposed to only connected to the moratorium. So I, I would think that that could easily be a part of the moratorium too, just to cover the two week lag between the next meetings. But um, that was my, my kind of my processing of why it should be separate. And I apologize for not reaching out to you before now. I was um, I, I apologize for not getting back to you sooner. sooner. Okay, we'll just leave it. We'll just go ahead. I hope everyone could hear me. Yes, we can hear you great. Thank you. Okay, Thank thanks. You I can't hear very well. It, it can be an amendment if, if that would be what the council chooses, but we can also wait the two the weeks. Ordinance. Yep. Okay. Anyone else want to raise their hand if they have a discussion and the council uh, push you about the amendment? I just don't want to skip you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second for the amendment. Let's take a vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. please say nay. Nay. One nay or two nays? Roll call. Roll call. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. No. Alderman Williams. No. Alderman Rockford. Aye. Alderwoman Purchase. Aye. Alderwoman Notoriano. Aye. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Seven ayes and two nays, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Clerk. Let's go. Uh, now we have discussion on the ordinance as amended. 
Um, so the first thing we will do is let those in the horseshoe speak first that have signed up to speak. Um, so in order, we have Alderman Rockford. Do we need to make a motion as amended oh. first, or has that already been done? We, made we, need, we need to make a motion as amended okay. first. Sorry, motion to accept the ordinance as amended. Motion to uh, move it as amended. Second. First and a second. All those in favor, just to, well, now we're having a discussion, sorry. Uh, Alderman Rockford, you're the first one signed up to speak on my cue, so we're gonna go with you first. Okay, um, I, I got a question for CWLP and, and Public Works. Two weeks ago when we talked about this, uh, that we were, were not able to get city residents to apply for these positions. Um, I don't know if Doug's here or Scott or whoever. Can you tell me how many, how many linemen CWLP is down right now? <clears throat> well, from down being a relative term, but from the peak, before we had all the um, budget issues, financial issues with the electric division, we had a close to 85 to 90 linemen. That was with just line department. That's the whole electric side of the IBW contract. Today we're in the 55 to 60 range. I don't have the exact number in front of me. Okay, so so when when were these positions, alignment positions budgeted for in fiscal year 2024? How many positions were budgeted for? Total. Do we know that? Top of, top of my head, no. Okay. Um, so I can, I can tell you we budgeted for, I think it was eight apprentices that were hired this year. Okay, eight, eight apprentices, but no journeymen. We did leave, we did budget for two journeymen this year. Two journeymen. Yes. Um, so my, my question is, is, is how are we supposed to recoup and, and, and replenish our, our linemen when we're not even budgeting for positions, when we know that retirements and we know that people are gonna be leaving uh, and we don't fill positions? I, I don't understand when we, we say that people don't, don't apply for these jobs. If there's no jobs budgeted and, and we don't have the money there, how are we, how are we gonna pay people to, and, and, we, and we say we, we, we need linemen. You know, not every year we're gonna have a storm like we did, but, but again, now all of a sudden we need, we, we need linemen and we don't even have budgeted positions. This isn't all of a sudden. This, this no, I, I understand that, Scott, but, but this has been going on for years. And, and my question is, is why do we drag our feet when it comes to hiring people? especially linemen who are Minutemen, who are the people that we rely on the most to, to get this, the jobs done, and, and we don't have bodies. So historically, getting linemen has been hard. Um, getting journeyman linemen is, is difficult. So we have posted it. We posted, I think this is the second or third time we've posted it, and we finally have two qualified candidates, possibly a third qualified candidate that we're going to interview. I think it's next week. So we've posted it, we didn't budget because we weren't getting applicants. Um, from the apprentice standpoint to build back to linemen, that is, we can, we typically from a construction side, we don't wanna get more than six linemen and we wait every two years. That is because of apprenticeship and training and, and the requirements that we have, the manpower to be able to train them. So part of it is also a, a ratio that's in the contract. If we have too many apprentices on site, I don't have enough journeymen or foremen to, to effectively train them. So that, we've got a chart here that's kind of laid out, but you can see every two years where we're hiring apprentices and that's been ongoing for quite a while. But is it, isn't there a statute you know, within the, the, the IVW that says you, you have to have so many journeymen per? There's nothing like that. Well, journeymen per apprentice. Per apprenticeship. It's, so, it's, many, so many journeymen per for every the, it's, apprentice. It's, it's actually the other way. There's okay. a minimum or a maximum number of apprentices per journey. Per, per journey. Or per, per foreman, actually, not journeyman. The way it lays out, there's a there's apprentices and journeyman per foreman. So, yes, ultimately there is a ratio there that has to be maintained. Okay, so, so I, you know, that, that's, uh, okay, that answers uh, my question about the, the linemen. Uh, but for, you know, public works, when I hear about public works not being able to, to get qualified help or the, the Springfield residents not stepping up and want to become a, a city employee, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't, 
you know, and I, I don't know why residency has anything to do with that because I, I can tell you there's people that work for the, that live in the city of Springfield who love to work for the, for the city. So again, I, I don't know how many people were down at, at Public Works. We, we just actually just hired a number of uh, truck driver, truck driver laborers. I think eight or nine of them we hired probably in the last six weeks. So we had maybe 15, 16 applicants. So uh, we're short a few people here and there. I think we're short a couple at the uh, at the sewer barn, um, and there may be uh, several administrative positions that we're short right now. But uh, you know, and I'm, and I'm just talking with public works. I know there's I know there's accountants. I know there's engineers. I know there's a lot of different uh, areas within the department that need need to be addressed. But uh, I just I, I find it hard to believe that nobody wants to work for the city of Springfield, uh, and 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 to say that. We need to draw from the outside to bring them in. I think that we got enough qualified people within City of Springfield to fill these positions. And that's my that's my take. Yes, sir. So thank you. Point of order, uh, well, Corporation Council. I know our rules state that we uh, have to go in order on, on request to speak, but a lot of times that the people who sign up to request to speak are talking to the ordinance in general. Um, I think we ought to have a proposal or a, a rule that allows us to interject in the discussion. Alderman Rockford has some valid questions in that. I'd like to inter interject and talk to uh, Scott Rogers on, on that, but I have to wait in line five people who may not have questions in front of me. So is that something we have to change our rules on or can we, uh, how do we do this? So the, the chair can recognize a valid question based on a question that comes up, but the chair also has the right to maintain order. So it would be up to the chair's discretion on how My she point wishes. being is that I would have to wait in line for for people who don't have the same questions for that for that uh, witness. Uh, my point is, is that I wanted to interject and ask questions of Mr. Rogers also, but I can't do that because I'm not on the list. I can get on the list, but then we get beyond the questions, if that makes sense. Madam Mayor, I'm, I'm first on the list. I'd be happy to do too. Allow Alderman Redpath. Right. The other to two move forward. in front of you have allowed him to ask Scott Rogers a question and you have other ones lined up. Uh, sure. Okay, Mr. Rogers, do you mind coming back up so Alderman Redpath can I'm ask I'm not trying to butt in front of anybody, but I have questions for this witness and I, I would like to hear it. So what is the ideal number for, uh, you gave us a number of, of the uh, number of employees that uh, fall under this, this category, but you're including in there uh, engineers and, and other administrative type people. I want to know how many linemen that we have and what is the criteria and where do you want to get to? The number I gave was linemen only. Didn't include engineers, accountants, uh, IT, didn't include any of that. It was only linemen. Um, that's a good question. So back when we were close to 100, we had a lot more construction going on. Um, today, we don't have as much construction, new construction that we're doing. Part of that is we don't have a staff. Part of that is just economics. Um, we have a plan laid out to be able to currently what the retirements is, as Mr. Rockford said, as Alderman Rockford said, we are flat for a couple years. We've been declining over the last five or six years. And I was in my budget presentation. I should have brought it, but I didn't. Um, but we'll be flat for the next four years, and then we will start growing with projected retirements. And obviously, uh, if you have more apprentices than you do journeymen to train them, that's not an uh, appropriate way to Correct. handle business. That, and that's why we do it every other year. So, so we got to get to the point where we have enough journeymen to bring enough apprentices in underneath. Correct. And that's what this whole thing's about, right? Correct. Yeah, so, and if you want, um, HR put together a trend. Please. Nicole's help come in to help you, Scott. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, Carolyn. I'm just going to come in yeah. and Please, please come to the microphone. Thanks, ma'am. So the overall applications, when you look at the total applicants, those are actually for selected position. But we really wanted to focus on what has happened with applications for the lineman positions in the years preceding and then following the residency requirement. And so you've got those numbers and you can see that red line where the residency hit 
and you can see the trends that have happened both in the number of applicants and then in the number of people who are qualified applicants. And so those trends have gone, gone down. And so this I thought was a beautiful picture. While I brought it, I'm not the creator, um, but it does a wonderful job at a glance of being able to see the trends that I will be speaking to about application. So I have something on this, yeah. on the, on, on this yeah, we chart. Have rules up on this chart. chart. <laughs> I'm a town yes, older woman. <laughs> I, I would just like to point out, um, or maybe just ask for clarification, um, any ideas about what happened in the economy in the Springfield metro area in the greater United States 2017 onward? Yeah, yeah, no, that our trends are not our own, we're not the only ones with these trends, mm -hmm. um, nor are we the only ones who are having a hard time with recruiting right now, nor are, are we the only ones who are, are having people make employment decisions by just not showing up. Um, that's a new trend that has been happening more frequently than it ever has in my three and a half, four decades of managing human resources. So it is reflective of the trends that are happening, but it also is a math problem whenever you're doing recruitment. So we have people who get to the date of hire and just don't come in, and then we're calling them and finding out they made a different decision. And that's happening with a greater frequency, but not just here at the city of Springfield. It's happening everywhere um, as it relates to employment. But it's a, it's a math equation <coughs> of facts. ensuring that we've got those people. So yes, absolutely. Absolutely, we are reflective of what's going on in our world. Um, so it, it just makes it tougher. So thanks for the clarification. Alderman Lib Chap, are you? I'm through, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, thank you, thank Scott. You, Scott. Alderman Donlin. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening, and this is an important issue for the city, important issue, needless to say, for the council this evening. <clears throat> and I, I want to say before I get started is I, I want to also thank you all for the discussion that we had a couple weeks ago. I thought that was a fruitful discussion. It's one of these topics that uh, obviously uh, sometimes we have to make hard decisions, and uh, but I, I'm so glad that uh, the, the, the topic of us being in a different situation was brought up, Alderwoman, because, I mean, needless to say, uh, you know, I speak with uh, a restaurant owner in Ward 9 just recently, and uh, this particular restaurant bar is not open on Mondays anymore. And the reason is because of the difficulty in hiring. And I know that's a restaurant bar, that's not the city of Springfield, so it isn't apples to apples. However, what has happened, uh, you know, we all know about COVID-19, and it absolutely changed the whole uh, scenario that we're all uh, presented with. It is truly a different world. It just is, it's different than it was in 2012, it's different than it was in 2021. Um, and just, just to give you some examples, this is, the, this is the topic that most concerned me. I remember when I worked in the mayor's office years ago, we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applicants to become a firefighter. And I was sent this information this morning by Local 37. I thought it was, it, it kind of tells the story. It doesn't go all the way back uh, to the uh, early 2000s, but in 2016, we had 734 applicants to, to try to be a firefighter. 2018, 639. 2021, 500. 2022, the most recent, 315. Okay, those are the applicants. So it went from 734 to 315 from 2016 to 2022. And those aren't the ones that make it through the process, my understanding is. Those are just the applicants. Now think about that. There's lots of reasons why. Um, I think COVID-19 was a part of it. I think uh, uh, just, you know, the struggle with attracting people that you alluded to earlier, just nationwide. Some people just uh, evidently don't want to work. Um, I, I don't have the magic, magic eight ball, but my point is, is I, I take this topic very seriously and we have to think about ways to do things differently and outside the box. And this ordinance doesn't eliminate uh, residency, it just kind of puts a time out on it. And I think it's something that we should strongly consider and see if it works, see what happens, look at the numbers down the road, and then we have something definitive to look at. That's all I have to say, Mayor, thank you. Okay. Alderwoman Not Notriano. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, yeah, th thank you for um, bringing that up. Alderman Donlin, 
uh, it is, we are in a, a very tough spot. Um, it's hard to find workers everywhere right now. Um, so I, I have a few things. So I unfortunately wasn't approached uh, about the moratorium other than what was put forward on um, first reading in the description of the ordinance. Um, so I'm sort of in the dark when it comes to the intent and objectives of the moratorium. But the description of the ordinance says we must end the residency requirement because current shortages in the labor and housing market make it impractical to enforce by limiting the pool of qualified can applicants in positions across all departments. So last week, our sponsors of this ordinance mentioned that there were certain <coughs> bargaining unit positions that had shortages. Uh, and I've spoken to um, these unions, uh, <coughs> firefighters, IBEW, uh, ASPE, I'm uh, aware that they're having problems with recruitment. Um, and so my, I'm not gonna argue about the need um, for hiring there, um, but as I discovered in my research of, of this uh, moratorium, what we do tonight, this moratorium does not affect bargaining unit employees. Am I correct in saying that? Well, we would, we would offer the, a memorandum of understanding, but council by action can't change our collective bargaining agreements. Yeah, right. That's correct. an administrative rule. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that clarification. And so my question is, um, if we realize these shortages, perhaps, you know, if I'd been included in the discussion, I would have suggested, uh, let's go ahead with these MOUs for IBEW and the firefighters, uh, people who are responsible for our life safety um, right now, instead of uh, waiting on this or, or doing this. Is that a motion? <laughs> um, <laughs> I would like to speak to that. I'm not going to go against city ordinance. Well, me signing an MOU like that would be defying the ordinance that was passed. No, no. The Corporation Council has advised that you can... Defy uh, ordinances? No, you can change collective bargaining languages, language with an MOU at any time. Oh, no, you can't. If the parties are in agreement. I'd like to uh, <coughs> clarify that no, we can't... The, the mayor does not have the authority to change the collective, change the terms of the collective bargaining agreement. But if if this passes, then the interpretation or the application of the moratorium could be achieved through memorandums of understanding executed by the mayor and the unions. But right now, the union contracts, which contain the, which contain um, language similar to our residency requirement, could not be changed by the mayor the same as the mayor couldn't change wages or couldn't change um, you know, our <coughs> change to a 40 hour work week. So I um, believe in the email exchange that we had yesterday, you had said that because this doesn't impact the bargaining agreements, it's not necessary. So we could do the MOUs without this moratorium. City. City Council would have to pass those up. Those okay, I mean, up. sure. Well, that's the one way to do it. Right, but cor correct. Yeah, the City Council would have, <coughs> if that were the preference of City Council, we would need to prepare the memorandum of understanding with the unions that were interested, and then those would come to the City Council as a vote. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would have offered that suggestion. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so, so what uh, bargaining units do you plan to enter MOUs with after we sign them? All of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. And um, I have more questions. <laughs> um, that's good to know. So, um, back to the point of the struggle in hiring. Um, it's not going to be easy to fill all of our positions that are vacant, bargaining unit or otherwise, um, because according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, our city, which is the linchpin of a metropolitan statistical area that includes Sangamon and Menards counties, has uh, record low unemployment and has had record low unemployment um, since 
about 2017. Um, and so what we're doing here is, um, I, I guess I don't know where these, um, where these employees are gonna come from, right? It appears to me that everyone in Sangamon and Menard counties who wants to work uh, is currently employed. And um, so are, if you look at the uh, BLS statistics for uh, Peoria and Bloomington and Champaign uh, and even Decatur, their uh, unemployment rates are also at record lows. Uh, so I just don't know that there are um, people out to be gotten um, by lifting this moratorium. Um, so what have we done to make jobs at the city of Springfield um, more attractive? Are you asking the chair a question? Yes. Well, our director of HR is here, but you are aware I've only been the mayor for six months, right? Oh no, 100%, <laughs> absolutely, okay. I gotcha. So I can only speak for six months. And absolutely. Not, since the moratorium was passed and statistics show applications have mm -hmm. gone down since it was passed. So I can only speak for since I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, so we look, I'll let Nikki come up and maybe speak to that. Yeah, just I'm questions sorry. about- Director Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, today is my third month anniversary, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for this. <laughs> um, I, and so to say what we're doing is that we have a lot of things that we're starting. So as I am looking at recruitment and the residency requirement, it won't allow my staff to just start eating bonbons. This is not going to fix all the challenges from a recruitment or identifying how we can meet talent and how we can entice them to come. With the record unemployment, and you are absolutely right, those numbers tell us that we are probably pulling from people who have jobs. So we're not looking for the people who are not employed because they don't have the requisite skills for many of the positions. We are looking to get them to make a change in their employment. And that is a different type of outreach than what you do when you have a large unemployment and you have a pool of candidates who are actively looking. We've got to make connections that entice them to just update their resume because often that's the piece that says, oh, if I apply for that job, I've got to write a new resume, I've got to do a cover letter, I've got to be prepared. So we're currently identifying what those recruitment relationships can be both in the city and in surrounding areas and how can we make relationships? How can we get them to know us? So what we've done in my three months is we have done a lot of outreach so far, like going out to UIS to be able to make those, those connections and making connections with other groups and ensuring that we are making personal mm -hmm. connections. So those pieces are happening. The other pieces that are in progress are still identifying what is it that makes somebody make that change? And you are right, Alderman Donnellan, that's changed. Um, the pandemic had a huge change on how people evaluate where do I wanna work? And so the answer to that question isn't the one that I've used for the last 20 years, it's a new answer. And so you've gotta ask the question and you've gotta listen. This piece won't take care of that because in that same data, because the Springfield information, when you look for at workforce availability, there isn't one just for Springfield. So generally, I don't use Springfield MSA because it includes Menard County. I look at just Sangamon County. And here's what I know about Sangamon County. It has reduced in the number of people that are in the workforce. And that is reduced by 3%. I also know from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that the demand for jobs in Springfield is increasing. And some of those, that increase is huge. So if I just pull engineering, for example, and I'm looking at engineering, many of those are in the double digit. So our population is shrinking, our demand is increasing, and I know from the census that around the community, while we're getting smaller, some of those are communities are getting larger. 
I also know that by that same Bureau of, of looking at the workforce availability for Sangamon County, that while the workforce total decreased by 3%, engineers, so the category that tells me the people with the requisite skills for science, engineers, and computer professionals has decreased by 30%. Oh my God. Those are the wrong numbers. Um, since 2012, so I, well, let me make sure that data. So we have decreased our total people that are in the workforce by 3%, but in some of those categories, we have lost the people with the requisite skill. And so I'm looking at this as a math equation because that's what recruitment is. I need to find people who can do the job and will do the job. And I want a broader perspective. So what I know is we get about half the number of applicants for every job we're hiring for than we used to. And it's on a basis of many, many reasons. But the world has changed since the residency went into effect and then where it is now. Not just because of the residency, it's just changed. But because of that, the decisions that we're making are about how do we attract talent. And so as we apply and somebody applies for a job, and we're going to look to see, do you, can you do it? And then will you, do you want to? Are you, are you eager? Will you come in and, and fulfill those duties? Residency adds another way that we're evaluating it. And because it's a binary decision, you must live within the corporate guidelines it's one that can wipe out the rest of them. So if I don't get those people at the right time, then I don't have the talent pool to be able to make good decisions. So for me, it's a, it's a math. The other piece that really changed is that COVID changed how we look at employment and it changed where our priorities are. And so what I know about the census is that in Springfield, 45% of the people who completed the census identified as married. I also know that in surrounding communities, it was over half said we're married. I know the average household is two plus. So that generally when somebody's making an employment decision, they're not just making the decision for where they'll live, they're making a decision where others in their household will live. So one story I have about somebody who joined the city before 2017, is that they moved from the Danville area. Her husband was laid off. He got a job in Havana. They moved to Petersburg, not because of a lack of commitment to Springville. She was committed to having a career here, but because they wanted a place they could both commute, earn a living, raise their son, and also be able to get home if he had an emergency. Now I'm gonna fast forward. She left the city for a while. We went and recruited her back. But now her husband has, is deceased, and she is a single income person with the city residency requirement. And the housing market said she could find a couple houses that she could afford, but they were in Jerome. So instead of buying the house, she's now renting the house. Hmm. This is a 15-year employee who has shown great dedication to the city, and I don't think that that should be a choice that she has to make she still is committed to this, this environment. So we're losing people, we lose them when we're at UIS and they say, oh, I'm just not gonna talk to you. We lose them when somebody comes in and they have a Springfield address and they confuse that with meaning I'm a resident because a Springfield address doesn't mean I'm in within the corporate boundaries and we can get all the way up and they just can't pull that trigger. The other thing that the pandemic taught us was we would always get people to re-recruit I've always moved people, relocate, um, because kids are resilient. And I think if there's one thing we learned is there is a cap on the resiliency of our youth. And they went through a lot. And I'm seeing fewer parents willing to relocate to be able to, for a job because they just can't pile one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, they're committed. Uh, so mine is, I love my community and I'm in it. I'm in it, I'm here. I want to make sure that we can find the people that can do the job and will do the job and that will do the work we need because for every day longer, it costs us money, it costs us productivity, it costs us in my staff time when we get all the way up and they say, I just can't move in. I just can't do that to the kids right now. Mm -hmm. And we lose them. 
But they and have a year to move, right? They do have a year, but they're, that's a commitment. We also have a waiver process, right? For up to six months for specific criteria. But it's making a commitment. Sure. And many of us know that often with the job we're going into isn't going to be the job we hold our entire life. Mm -hmm. And to disrupt or make a decision is, is challenging. Mm -hmm. but, but that's, I'm coming from a recruitment standpoint. Sure, sure. And I, I, when somebody, if I moved a block, I would be within the corporate boundaries. But I'm not. And I don't know that I can trade my 4% mortgage and mess with things and the housing market isn't there and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes a barrier for me to get talent. Yeah. I just want the barrier to be removed for a little bit mm -hmm. because we have a number of war-worn departments mm -hmm. who have been operating without staff and trying to do whatever they've got to do, work whatever number of hours they've got to work, to get the job done and serve our citizens. And I'd like to get them some help. Sure. Um, so that's that's my piece. I want them as equally committed. I'm hearing stories all the time about people who have, uh, but I do stop and shop here before I would go home. The person that I shared said, I would always go to the grocery store on my way home, so Sprinkle got my money. And then she didn't want me to tell you she would usually stop for fast food, but she didn't want you to know she ate that much fast food. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's that piece. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's a recruitment issue. Sure. sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. it, um, you did a good job for your three months. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for woman purchase. I think so, too. Well, thank you. I also did pull, because I, you had asked, so if anybody wants, I do have numbers that um, had asked about the number of people that are in Springfield now, who are outside of Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, so we've pulled those numbers. The challenge for us is there is a script that must be written to figure out the corporate boundaries. So all we can go off right now are Springfield addresses. Mm -hmm. So we are working to be able to get that script written. No, no worries. I, I think we're probably not going to balance any budgets on uh, this revenue that comes in from from city employees, so um, that's not my argument, um, but I, I appreciate your work on that. All right, thank you. Yeah, and um, I, I'll just wrap up with um, this, which is truly um, one of my chief concerns uh, about this. You know, we all have residency requirements to hold the policy-making positions that we hold up here and um, if we were to pass the moratorium as it is, um, that would allow um, us to hire people at the director level and manager level and leadership positions um, who don't have the buy-in, don't live in Springfield and um, yeah, just have, have a, a interest in the future of the city, essentially. So um, I just wanted to ask you, do, do you have any plans to hire? The directors are all full. Well, other management level positions from outside of the city. In, in um, chapter 36 with the ordinances, there is the ordinance that is the section that is about general employees, and then there is one that is about appointed positions, and that one is separate from the section that talks about general. And I'm not sure what this ordinance amends, but there, those are two specific sections. Okay. Do you know? Yeah, I, I there isn't any director positions open. Right. right. Well, not just directors. There are other people who would be in positions to, to <coughs> affect policy. Those are employees, though, not, they're not. It, it, precisely. For civil service. But do they live in Springfield or don't they? Or is my question. Or my concern, anyway. Um, yeah, do, do you know if this. D directors would not be subject to uh, the residency requirement if this moratorium passes. Okay. 
Director Posey, did you have something you wanted to add to that before I, Alderman Gregory, are you okay if Director Posey speaks? Absolutely. Thank you, Alderman Gregory. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I just wanna speak directly to Alderman Notariano's questions. Um, one thing I did today was I had a meeting with my counterpart in Champaign, and so they have a residency requirement on their directors in city government, but not anyone below them. So I don't, I'm not a member of city council. I don't know how you amend things and how that works, but that piece of information I did learn today. Um, I just wanted to give you some perspective from a community standpoint, because you said, you know, most people here have jobs and what are we looking for? So for people who have worked in the same position from 2020 until now, there's usually, if they're looking for a new job, it's one of two things. If they're in the financial or the corporate world, they may not have any room to move up in the company that they're in. And with the housing market the way it is now, if you're starting a family or your family needs more space, you need the ability to make more money and have upward mobility. So uh, we had our Leadership Springfield cohort last week here and the mayor was there and Alderman Donlin and Alderman Hanauer were there. We have some very, very capable people in my cohort in all of the areas that we need here in the city. But some of them live in Sherman, some of them live in Riverton. Now, their kids go to St. Al's or SHG. They go to church in Springfield. They shop at County Market, they shop at Snooks. You know, if you live in Jerome and you live on Isles, Franklin Middle School's in your backyard, but you're not considered a part of the community. So I know a lot of people are gonna talk about the numbers and the finances, but from a community standpoint, I find it hard to tell someone who your kids go to school with, who you go to the same grocery store at, who you go to church or the mosque or the synagogue with, if they're not a part of your community, then they can't work for your city and benefit your city. So back to the professional standpoint, if you don't have upward mobility in a banking job or a corporate job, simply because usually when you work your way up in those roles, you tend to not leave. It makes more sense to stay. You may want to apply your talents here for the city of Springfield where there are more openings and there's more room for upward mobility, especially with people who are gonna be retiring coming up in the next few years. On the other side of that, if you look at the nonprofit sphere, there was a lot of work that went into keeping different programs running and alive during the pandemic. That three year span from 2020 till now, for a lot of people, the work they had to do was like a decade's worth of work. And they're burned out <coughs> in the current role that they're in. And they're looking to do something where they can benefit their community and benefit their city, but they simply need a change of scenery to recharge their batteries. So when you look at the unemployment rates and say, the majority of people who are in Springfield or in Sangamon County have jobs. Yes, they do. But many of them are looking for a lifestyle change or just a change of pace from what they've been doing. My final point, my wife and I are fortunate enough that we are closing on a house on Thursday yes. that can accommodate our kids. I am ecstatic. We live right now in a two bedroom duplex. In order for us to find a subletter, Okay, if their credit score is not above 700, they have to have double the rent and your deposit, which comes out to about $4,500 that you have to sublet a two bedroom duplex from now until March, which you may not be able to get back. You may not be able to afford the price it costs for rent, but it's a nice area. It's where your kids live. Now, if I'm asking someone to move from their home in Sherman, where they're paying $1,200 a month for their mortgage to find $4,500 to pay $300 a month more for a small two bedroom duplex, and they have a family, that's an unreasonable ask. But their skill set, their experience, and their love for the community, they go to church here, their kids go to school here, they shop here, whether it be shopping for clothes, shopping for goods, shopping for food. They love Springfield. They just live just outside the corporate city limits. To get from my house to my job every day, I have to drive through the middle of the Leland Grove and Jerome. And it's strange because technically, they're not in the city of Springfield. Our mayor, who's doing a phenomenal job, 
is a graduate of Rochester High School. And you can't tell me that she does not love I'm not from here. this city of Lincoln. <laughs> I'm, and I'm not from here either. And that, and that is I the am. point that I'm speaking to. Even though we are not from here, we have become a part of this community. We are accepted and we work hard every day for this city and the people of Springfield. I think it's unfair to tell people, hey, we're gonna test this out and see if we lift the residency requirement, if we can fill these spots with quality people. Say, no, 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 we want Springfield jobs to be for Springfield. Well, I would argue that the community of Springfield and that the greater Springfield area is much more than just the corporate city limits. We have our greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce. We have our Springfield Sangamon Growth Alliance who do a lot of things in Springfield, but also for the surrounding areas. I've lived in five different capital cities, including Springfield. I grew up in Trenton, New Jersey. My mom did not want me going to Trenton school. So I lived five minutes down the road in Lawrenceville, but both of my parents worked in the city. I went to church in the city. My mom got her hair done in the city. And, and what you say about schools hits the nail on the head because uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the reason um, we've seen population shift outward of the city. Um, yeah, that's, that's what people say. Um, is is they say I'm going to move to Chatham for the schools or so on and so forth. Um, I just don't think that's a trend we want to reinforce or feed. Um, but that's my opinion. Well, Mayor, let the record reflect that Alderman Carlson has joined the forum. <laughs> Thank was, you, I Clerk West. I was going to make that motion. Hello. We had a break. And also, I just wanted to provide that information for you. Yes. That Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Director Posey. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Alderman Gregory. Real quick, and I won't be long. Um, I agree with you, Jennifer, um, on, on, on our school districts and, and how important they are. Um, I took a lot of notes up here, and, and, and I'll say for the community that I represent, because I'm, I'm, I'm elected to represent the city of Springfield um, and, and Ward 2, and that, that, you know, I know we have some positions, and, you know, it's, it's hard to to really, you know, make a decision on, on this because there's, there's so much information that, that we really, really have to consider and I think that we have to um, to really think about it. And, you know, I, I worry about, you know, if we fill every position that everyone wants, what, what does that look like for our budget? You know, and, you know, I would lean on Alderman Hand, our good numbers guy, to, 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 to really look at that. We budget so many, so many slots for, for a reason because we got so much um, budget. Alderman McDonald, you know, w with our um, housing issues, we always talk about dealing with the ordinance and, and making changes within that. I think this is one of these cases where we have um, an ordinance and, and we have some situations and some, some one-off situations. Um, it sounds to me, when I, when I go to our website, there's 10 jobs available. Um, you know, I have my opinion on some of the requirements for them, but there's 10 jobs available. Um, Last week we talked about hiring. Our police have done a wonderful job hiring in a tough, very tough climate. In the last two years, they hired 75 officers. 65 of them still remain with us under their current guidelines. Almost 40% live outside of our of our city. Um, met some of the, met some of them early morning. Not not particularly uh, from Springfield, but very very nice young men, and we want to keep them. Um, I think we, we, we really have to consider, you know, I, I, I heard discussion about, you know, some of the outlying towns and stuff being, having going through the same problems that we have. Um, um, so I don't, I don't know how that's really gonna benefit us. I, 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 you know, I worry that we're gonna find ourselves in a position where, where somebody from Peoria or, or, or uh, Bloomington or someone with 30 to 45 minutes away and, and, and be working for the city of Springfield. I, don't, I just, I don't know, I have my druthers with that. Um, our linemen, I support you guys having what you need to, to operate every day. And if we need to focus on getting linemen, for good linemen, qualified linemen, whether it's Springfield or, or some of our tight, close uh, towns, I'm, I'm all for looking at that. Um, I'm all for Springfield residents first and after we exhausted all options. Um, of us of us looking at, at, at somebody uh, maybe not from here um, 
I can agree with it's unfair to make everyone, you know, live in if they have a true hardship or if we uh, run into a situation where we just cannot fill the position. Um, some of these positions on here are some um, some, some specialties, um, but I'm, but I'm not going to accept the, the the cashier as you know CWLP. We can't find nobody for that. I'm not accepting that we can't find people for public works because I know a whole bunch of people that would love to be public works if they don't have a TDL um, or a CDL. I know we have provisions in our language to help them train with that. So so my recommendations just going forth is. Um, more job fairs. I can't say that <clears throat> I've seen us uh, have a great push um, with, with, with this thinking that we're, we're having a hard time, not, not, not in the community in which I'm from. Um, more partnerships, there's gotta be more than um, UIS. It's many, many, many different organizations that, that will help you um, have, you know, get, get our hiring out there, um, job fairs, et cetera, uh, within this city. Um, and I just talked about our, our um, TDL drivers. If they need CDLs and stuff, we do have some programs to help them get their CDLs. And I think, I think going forward, you know, we 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 talk about um, everyone in the country going through hiring things, um, COVID and this and that. Um, but a lot of people aren't just sitting back, depending on the government to take care of them. A lot of people are betting on themselves. A lot of people are going to work, and and and. You know, I, I still run a, a, a landscape business myself, just trying to get ahead. Um, so ultimately, I think higher wages, more incentives for people to, to work for the city of Springfield um, are really going to help us continue to fill jobs at the city of Springfield. We're never going to be able to compete with the state. We're going to lose some people to the state. Um, but we have some, some, some very, very good people in this city, and um, they probably will come work for the city of Springfield. Um, if the pay is there and the incentives is there, um, you know, and leave current jobs and, and then those jobs are in the same situation that we in. So it's a revolving circle and, um, you know, we want to build our, 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 our city strong. I, I did some research on this and, you know, the last time this came up when it wasn't, you know, we seen um, some of the outskirts boom and, and we, we, we suffered. So, so we come back with uh, the city residency um, and now here we are at this point again. So. Um, you know, there's multiple reasons why I can't be for this particular uh, moratorium, but I look forward to working on our Springfield preference ordinance and, and seeing if we can make that work for the best of the people of Springfield um, and, and, and filling as many positions as we, we fiscally can, can really do. Thank you. Alderman Rockford. Thank you. Um, in, in speaking on this moratorium, we have not even spoken about a, a time frame. So does anybody have an idea on how long this moratorium will last? Are we going to uh, talk about that at all? If there was a crystal ball to tell me when the worker shortage would end, I would put it in there. Well, how about we get a list of how many how many jobs are open right now? Can, do, we, do, do we know that? There are 17 positions posted. 17 right now. positions. I don't like the limelight, so this is, <laughs> so staying back somewhere is good. We are currently, there are 34 positions, and those don't include the ones that we're doing for the police department or the fire department. We've got a total of about 70. That's a changing number, like if an offer went out today that I don't know about, um, or we received information for a posting, but that was the last place that I put, because I meet with the recruiters every week. We go over where they are, what our strategies are, et cetera. Um, so we were at 70 the last time I hit those numbers. 70, that's including police and fire? Yes, it is. Okay. And there are about 34 at the time that I looked that were not police and fire. So there's 17 posted because we'll pull down postings as um, we're, because it closes. And so we're doing the interview process or we're in background checks. Um, wherever there's a variety of places we can be. Sure. So, go ahead. Uh, so this, you look in this crystal ball, like you said. I'd love months, to have we, it. Three months, we fill all these positions. We're going to revisit this and say, hey, we're going to do do away with this moratorium. If the worker shortage gets. Fixed. I mean, is it going to be etched in stone, or we're we just going to do it by word of mouth? Well, I say question. we make it. I'd say make a, I'll make a motion. We we look at it uh, in a year. 
I wouldn't go six months. But if the jobs were filled in three months, well, why, would, we'll, why would we'll go just, a year? We'll revisit it. Well, let's go to six months then, Larry. Let's, no, we'll just, split I'm the asking. difference. I'm no, asking. I, it's I'll not my ordinance. The, I'll split the difference with you. Uh, yeah, I'll I'm propose. Not, I don't, you don't have to split anything with me. I'm asking a simple question. Oh, no, I the agree. The ordinance is up here and there's no, no language in it. I'm asking. Is there a time frame? That's what I'm Come saying. On, well, I'll make a motion to go six months. That's all I'm asking. I'll second Thank your, you. I'll second your motion. <clears throat> So, Alderman Carlson, can you please speak to what you're... I say, well, I make a motion that the city revisit, give us, give council the numbers uh, after six months upon the passage of this moratorium to see uh, if, obviously, any movement in the numbers, if we have more, you know, job applications. So, I guess we'll have to narrow it down. It's what if numbers this, When will this kick in? Let's say it kicks in. What's the uh, effective date on this? If we upon right. passage, okay, upon passage. So let's say six months from you know tonight or tomorrow. But the, what, when you mean numbers, you mean numbers. Well, let's just say right, well, right, right. Let's start from that. ground zero tomorrow. How many uh, how many vacancies we have? How many people are applying? And then in six months, uh, how many vacancies we have? And how many people are applying there? I'd be happy to you know, <laughs> I'd be happy to, to entertain any discussion on that. But I think at a minimum. I think that's what we're looking at. I, I think I need a, before I even begin to put that down in an amendment, I would need a point of clarification uh, with our HR director um, on what vacancies are because those numbers that you provided would be posted yes. available positions, yes. not vacancies. Yes. Because there would be vacant positions that there's not a posting for, right. for some that's reason or another. Right. So. No, I, I, I use that interchangeably. You know, I'm fine with that. Point of order, Mayor. Alderman Donlin. Since, since we've had a amendment pop up, so to speak, uh, to the proposed amendment, if I can, uh, part of the issue that I discussed earlier was we have this fire testing process as an example in which uh, the numbers have considerably gone down over the years. It was 700 plus just a few short years ago, and now we're down as far as applicants go. And that isn't going to be even, we're not even going to test, we're not going to go through that process in the next six months. It's going to take longer than that. So just for information and consideration, um, there's, there's a number of things going on. We have the vacancies that you talked about, Alderman Rockford. There's no question there and how we're filling them and where we're going to, going to be. Uh, if I can make a suggestion, and you can take it if you want or not, that uh, I don't think it hurts to, uh, and, and, and uh, Corporation Council will probably like this one, I don't think it hurts to revisit it meaning have the discussion in a you know, certain amount of time, but uh, in order to see the true impact and analyze the numbers, it's going to take longer because we have this, as an example again, the fire process, it takes a while. And it's not even, I don't even think we have a, we're, we're open right now. So anyway, uh, just food for thought. So Alderman Carlson, do you have a motion? Well, I think I would stay with my motion. Let me ask Corporation Council. Yeah, I would just, the point I'm trying to make was we need some sort of benchmarks, if you will, if we're going to do this moratorium or we're going to do the test this, whether it's six, you know, six months, a year, or three months. Um, so I think what ultimate Donald is saying is, hey, we'll just, without any specifics, just saying we will revisit it as a council in a X amount of months, six months, three months, nine months. I think the point of information, Corporation Council, um, I, I think it's important to, one, know how many firefighters we need until we get to our full capacity. Um, I know it's, it's what, two, 270 for the police, and, and, and we're about 20, 25 off from that. And I think it's really important um, just, to, just to make sure, you, you know, the, the amendment is correct of how many um, firefighters we're looking to get to. I'm not sure we have an amendment yet, though. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying for, for their potential amendment of how many firefighters we're trying to get to, do we need 20 more, 30 more? Um, and, and we also need to have clarification on how many is on the current list, because the, the current list is, is active for a year, and they normally go through those bands um, as, as they need firefighters. So hang on. I've got three other people. <laughs> First, let me go back to Alderman Carlson, because I just want to finish. Do you have an amendment to this or not? <laughs> Of us well, I mean, again, I think I'll follow with Alderman Donnelly. Can we, should this uh, ordinance pass tonight, I guess we'll keep it broad and say, can we revisit this in six months? Is that Corporation, Corporation Council? Council? 
you can you can make that motion um, to amend the ordinance. Now, if the council were to revisit the ordinance with, with that language, if, if we use that language, that means it would still remain in place. So there would be a discussion at, at the council meeting in six months, but unless further action were taken, um, okay. unless further action were taken, the, mor the, would, the moratorium would be in place. So I don't want right. council to confuse that with a sunset clause. Oh, that's fine. I'm not talking about sunset. I'm talking about, yeah, passage of the moratorium with I'm in favor of, and really, I'd like to go a year. My, that that might be my memo that this city council revisits the moratorium in one year. So Alderman Carlson, you have a motion for an amendment that we revisit the moratorium in one year. Is there a second for second. his amendment? Alderwoman said second. Now we're in discussion phase. That makes me feel much better. Alderman Redpath. Well, first off, the discussion about uh, six months is uh, not enough time. And I think a, a year is more feasible. Uh, we get to the point we say, hey, it's working, we take it off. We say it's not working, we, we continue it. Uh, we got a, another variable in this the, the whole discussion that's coming up in about three months, and that's called the budget. Every department's going to come in here now, and they're going to speak to us about how, how, many, how short they are. And why don't you tell me you're not? Because I know you all are. Every, every department is, is, is low, and every department needs help. And it's not necessarily the just hiring outside the city. It's just that in general, you need help. I can tell you that I know about the utility. I know about public works. I know about the police department. Uh, every one of them needs help. And we're going to have to do that. Um, so the budget's coming. And we're going to hear about more increases because we're not to the point where we are, where we need to be with the police department. We're adding them as fast as we can add them. But we're way behind still. We need to get to a certain point where where we don't even have a traffic division. We used to listen to uh, Alderman uh, DeCenso over here talk about where's our uh, traffic enforcement. They do the best they can, but they don't have enough people. We got to find enough numbers to make sure that we cover the city. Safety is the most important thing to our citizens. Ask them, and they'll tell you. Safety is the most important thing. Uh, every department's important to us, but we got to make sure we fix that police department. And I know the mayor's got a good handle on it right now, and we're, we're moving forward. But a year is reasonable. Six months is way too short. Um, and we just got to remember, three months, we're going to be in a budget. So we're in discussion on Alderman Carlson's amendment. Alderman Hanauer, you had something to add to the discussion? Yeah, I think, and I agree, uh, a year with the, with the, with the trend, the, the, the graph that we got, if you look, um, six months wouldn't have been enough to really tell you where we we land. Um, and I think that we, uh, we need to look at, it's not just who we hire, it's how many applicants we ha have. You know, that's that's where I see the, where we got to look at the benchmark at, at number, how, how we're doing with applicants now versus how we're going to do if this moratorium goes into place. Because, um, you know, Filling jobs, that's one thing, but, but we got we got to get more applications in, and, and not just for police and fire, but, you know, and we, we got to get the best, you know, the best people we can. And so um, I appreciate you moving that to, to one year. Thank Any you. other discussion on the amendment right now, <coughs> Alderman Carlson? Okay. So we have a motion and a second for his Alderman Carlson's amendment to revisit this in a year. Can I get a motion or a roll call vote for those in favor of that? Say, Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Roll call. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Nay. Alderman Williams. Nay. Alderman Rockford. Aye. Alderwoman Purchase. Aye. Alderwoman Nacheriano. Aye. Alderman Carlson. Aye. Alderwoman Conley. Alderman Donnelly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Eight ayes and two noes, Mayor. Thank you, Clerk Lister. Now back to the... Okay, back to the... <laughs> back to our program. With two, two amendments now. Alderman Hanauer, you're the next signed up to speak. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, this is about competition and, and competing against other municipalities and, and other businesses and everything to try to get more applicants in. And that's what, that's what this is all about. And we've seen a drop in the, in the number of applicants, and, and there's, there's many factors. And, you know, I'm sure it's not just residency, but that, that is one factor. And, uh, 
you know, we, we talk about buy-in. People, people think that if you don't live in the city proper that you don't have buy-in. I got a brother that retired last year, did 35 years with the city. He lives outside the city limits. He lives in the Springfield Township or whatever it is. And, and he worked his butt off for this city. And we've got, I think when we're saying that if you don't live in the city that you don't have buy-in, it's a disgrace to the, to the employees that don't live in the city that work their butts off out here. That's a shame that we would even say that because I guarantee you the, the employees care. You know, I, I, I mean, you know, we talk about housing. Housing, you know, the, the interest rates are up. We're forcing people to, to move. And, you know, last, last year or up this year, we've had 25 new housing starts, not including the Nehemiah project. They've had, I don't know, and I don't know how many that is. And of the 25 out uh, that are outside of that, the average average price of the houses are over $500,000. The average price of a duplex, each side of a duplex is $325,000. A, a new employee here at the city cannot afford that. They're, they're, they're short on inventory. You ask any realtor, they, they're concerned about the whole real estate industry right now because there's no inven inventory. I've got friends of mine that, that, that have been in real estate for years that are now starting to think they're going to have to get a different job because there just isn't enough real estate out there to sell. And it's a problem. So, you know, and then we talk about, it, and schools are part of it. Whether we like it or not, some people want to go to Chatham or want to go to Rochester and you know, uh, New Berlin. We've got all kinds of different school districts in this city. I, th I think I've got two or three. I know, Chuck, you've got three. Uh, you've got two or three. Um, you know, most of us do. And, you know, oddly enough, the, the school district takes the, the most amount of your, your property tax dollars. Hmm. Take the most amount, 186 does. And guess what? They don't require their teachers to live in the district. So the people that are for residency, why are they not raising all kinds of holy heck with the school district about it? And you know why the school district doesn't do it? Because they wouldn't be able to get enough teachers. And that's what it's all about. You know, I would love, in a, in a perfect world, it'd be great if everybody could live in the city of Springfield. But... You know, we got people that 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 you know in in Jerome, New Ber or Jerome and uh, um, uh, Leland Grove that we're saying no, you're not good enough to work here. That, that's ridiculous, and I just think that we got to do whatever we can to attract more applicants and get the best people for the job. In the sermon, Alderman Williams. <laughs> Yes, thank you. <coughs> Most of my questions have been answered, so I'm down to. So the city of Peoria uses Position Pacific. So uh, HR, did we consider that? Did we consider well using Position Pacific? Meaning, don't open this thing all the way up for every job in the city. But if you have issues with trying to fill a position then identify or target those positions and put a moratorium on those positions for a while until they improve and then revisit and all this other stuff you guys are talking. But right now it's like you just threw the whole thing out. No, we're just going to open it up for every position. Am I right? Well, it's a couple things. Um, we are seeing the applications be reduced for every position. There are some that are harder than others. Um, and certainly some that I would focus. My understanding of Peoria's residency requirements isn't just that they lift for, but that they have different requirements based on different positions and union contracts, and that the majority have to be within 20 miles of City Hall, whether it's within the 
residency or not, which is similar, I think, to what Bloomington has. But I, again, what we did was we asked municipalities um, what the residency requirements were and are basing that on the emails we got. So I haven't gone and done research beyond that. Okay. Um, so the numbers and the recruiting and the time to fill has been more broad based. As I talked to um, the two people who do the majority of the recruiting and was asking specifically so that I could answer a couple questions about position or how often it comes up, they said it's really coming up on a consistent basis. Uh, so it was affecting more than just a single position. Okay, well, I just think we're not having this problem to me throughout the whole entire city. Not having applications come in doesn't mean, I mean, we've been operating all this time. Even before Mayor B Busher, we were operating. Now the police has issues, then that's position specific. Linemen, they're position specific. But to open it all up, I just feel that we don't need to do that. The other area, we already addressed expiration or some type of sunset, but we passed the amendment. I can live with, you know, in a year we'll revisit and uh, to see how this goes. But I want to ask you as HR, right. so do you know of anybody waiting for once this passes that you're going to hire that doesn't live in Springfield right now, but you're going to hire as soon as this passes? I know two people that we lost at the end of the hiring process. I asked that's on the list or that you know well, that are waiting. But we don't get that far if they're not residents right now. I have, a, I have a staff member who is waiting, who took the job with the intention of moving into Springfield, who um, has been looking for houses and can't find one, and is definitely watching the residency because they're gonna have to make a painful decision. Yeah, well, I'm um, not talking. I, I also the know. Apply there. I'm so sorry. Alder, Alderman. Yes, I'm Williams sorry. My question is, uh -huh. is there a list or do you have any knowledge of anybody outside of Springfield that's waiting to be hired, but they can't get hired until we pass this ordinance? Or do you have any knowledge of any people like that? Not your staff, not any of those kind of things. I, I do not have anybody that we've put a hold on a position waiting for this residency decision. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, Alderman Williams? No, thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Alderman Carlson. Uh, in closing here, thanks everybody for voting for that motion. No, but I just want to say that this moratorium is, is the right thing to do to me, and it's the right thing to do now. You know, city government still has to function. You know, city services still have to be provided to our citizens. And to me, it's, it's incumbent upon us as leaders, elected officials of the city, to make sure that, that the city services continue to function properly in a right and orderly fashion for the residents uh, of the city of Springfield. Um, so I am, I am, I'm proud to be support, supporting this moratorium and, and looking at it after another year. I think it's gonna, hopefully it's gonna, it's gonna change some things, uh, but I would, I would urge a, a yes vote. Alderman Gregory. My final thing, I, I had asked for a point of information for some information, but we moved on. But normally you get those information when you ask. What information did you need, sir? I, I asked um, Corporation Council um, about oh, fire and police. Fire numbers I was and, just and, trying to move on because it wasn't specific to that amendment. So we can get that now. No, yeah. I understand. Do you, do you know that information? Well, I don't know that he's going to have that. I do you have any more of a HR? It shouldn't be hard. Um, she, she, she should have that information. How many, how many are we off until we're fully staffed? Chief Scarlett would know for police. I know that we are hoping to, fire, to hire 21 police officers out of this current class and that we are hoping to fi hire 15 firefighters out of this particular class. I know that our current headcount is 223 for officers and 204 for firefighters. But I didn't know Chief was here, so he'll give you the better data. <laughs> Chief so, Scarlett, you can come so up to the microphone. That's, that's what I want to I just want to know what, then, what a fully staffed police department Chief Wood is, is here too. and a fully yeah, staffed fire department. You're in 223 now. Our authorized strength right now is 254. We have not seen authorized strength in probably 10 years. Thank uh, you. So, I mean, we all, you said 220, 
We're, we are currently sitting at 236 is where we're at. And we need to be at 254 is our authorized so strength right now. Now, I will say that that's, um, you know, at our high point when we're able to provide uh, efficient services to the city of Springfield, 282 was the, our, our authorized strength. And that's certainly something that I'm striving to get closer towards as we move forward in this budget. That's what uh, I want to know. I want to know that, that top number where we're at 282. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that, that's important. If I could just add a few more points, um, obviously we have several retirements that are forecasted. Uh, we are in the process of testing phase right now that we have marketed and advertised at every college, every high school, every military base, uh, every job fair, every church around. And uh, we have 20 people that have taken our test over the last two days. Now we have one more day and I pray to God that we get a lot of people on that list. but. Um, I would beg to have 315 applicants for the Springfield Police Department. So we're nowhere close to on that. the current on the current list. Is it about to, is it expired and and no longer um, we, we, active? We can't select from that anymore. No, our lists don't expire. Our list we run out of people. I mean, we're we're going through lists three times a year because okay. we don't get enough qualified people okay. uh, to hire eight to ten per okay. round. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, and and and, and just my thanks. my final things is. Alderman, before you finish, D.C. Wood is here for fire. Oh, yes, 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 for fire. Don't leave. <laughs> yeah, my name is Matt Wood, uh, Division Chief there, uh, Deputy Division Chief of the Fire Department. Uh, Chief Caney is out of town, so that's why he's not here. Uh, but what I was told was 223 is our top number, uh, but currently we're at 204. Okay. And uh, we are expecting a lot of retirements here in the next. I mean, it's been going on for years with us. Absolutely. So, uh, I think we're looking anywhere. We have the possibility of between 50 and 75 retirements here shortly, up in the next two years. Okay. So, And how many, um, we, we just had some classes, correct? Go correct. We just brought on 21. There are some in the back. 14, I'm sorry, Absolutely. 14. Absolutely. She said, get it right. Okay. <laughs> and um, are the people in red the recruits? Some of them are, yes. All right. <laughs> they are here. Thank you for showing up. Okay, so I lost my train of thought. So 223 is where we want to be. We're at 204 now. Um, and do we have a current class going? We, uh, do, uh, we do not have a current class going right now, but we are in between. We just finished up one, and I believe we're going to be starting one shortly, at the beginning of the year, I believe right. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you, do, does the fire department have a list as well that we that we go by and try to get through? Yes, that, that would be through the civil service and through HR, the civil okay. services. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. And, and and I would just say, you know, for our budget director, I, I think it's important for us to, to really, because um, I, I have no problem, you know, voting for us to get to 282 and 223, um, but I want to see how it affects our budget with, with us at that full staff. I think that's important. I think it brings some understanding to why we uh, are not there at times. Um, you know, I think we've had this discussion before about different things and different raises and um, some of us didn't think we could do it and some of us could, but, but the premises of behind it, we said we'll have to cut the fat meat. You know what the fat meat is? The fat meat is the services that we provide to the citizens of Springfield. That's what the fat meat is. So we have to be careful. We budget for a reason. We would love to have a full police force. We would love to have a full fire uh, fire department. And I'm sure we'd love to have uh, uh, more TDLs and, and all types of things for public works and every piece of equipment that they ever dreamed of. But we have a budget. We only bring so much in. On my hand, I were brought up the school district gets 62% of our property taxes. That doesn't even cover their budget. Um, we have to supplement our pensions and sales tax and all types of crazy things just to make the city go. So, so you know, while we're making these decisions and, and, and um, opening up the doors for, for people just to live everywhere and work for this city, we have to understand that at, at some point in time, nobody's going to live in the city of Springfield. And they're all going to live in the outskirts of town because that's where it's better at. When you look for a home, I want to be a homeowner too, Ethan. And when you look for it, the first thing that pops up is the school district in which that house is. And, and when it pops up, and it pops up Landfair and Southeast and all those things, I want it to have not only a, um, a good price on the house, but somewhere where people are going to want to stay in the city of Springfield as well. Because right now, if you live on the outskirts of town, out in, in many areas, those kids go to those better schools. Those kids go to those, those, those parents want to send their kids to what's perceived 
as better schools. But just imagine if we had a school out west because we were saving that 40 to $60 million or whatever it is. City will look totally different. And then we're talking about raising property value and people wanting to build more houses and do things. So, you know, I'm, I'm totally with the mayor's initiative of build Springfield, but I'm for real about it. And um, I don't see this as a way of building Springfield. So thank you. Alderwoman Conley, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm here. Would you like to speak before we open it up to the public who has signed up to speak? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Alderman uh, Redpath. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Chief Alderman Scarlett, Redpath. Um, uh, so you're, we're, we're driving to that point with uh, our numbers, and uh, one of the biggest problems we have, and as you know, is traffic. And uh, uh, what is our number of traffic officers now? We currently have one sergeant and one traffic officer assigned to our For the whole city division. of Springfield. For all 77 square miles. So think. what was what were we when we were at the peak on our traffic division? Uh, high water mark was probably six to eight traffic officers and a supervisor. Okay. Are you uh, are you planning to address that in the budget coming up? That is in my budget request for next year. For and, and again, back to uh, Alderman DeSenza who uh, screamed and yelled about traffic division. She was right, and you know, and you agree with that because we we don't have enough traffic officers right now. Yeah, we can't keep up with the. It's a disaster out there, and it's dangerous out there. And those are uh, critical decisions that I, as the leader of the organization, had to make, that we had to pull from some of the ancillary positions right. to ensure that there were enough officers answering calls for service. And, in fact, that leads to traffic issues, more accidents, more um, problems throughout Springfield that we now need to address. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so we do have many people. Oh, sorry, Alderwoman Purchase. My apologies, <laughs> Alderwoman. Thank you. I think that this has been a very healthy discussion, and I want to thank the directors that came up to speak because there are a lot of people watching. We have been flooded with emails for the last seven to eight days of people saying vote for this, people saying don't vote for this. And some of these testimonies that we heard from you, those are not everyday conversations we get to have with you all. So I think it was healthy today, and I urge our uh, my colleagues to vote for this ordinance. And I also thank Alderman Carlson for bringing in that timeline, because I know that had been a concern since last week or the week before about how long would this take. And I had a few notes to ask, but a lot of it has been addressed tonight. And I think just those benchmarks in place People talk about not being involved in a process, and I think you're doing a good job of involving us in the process and continuing to bring it forward when we have success. Sometimes we like to pick on all the negative things that happen, bring up ordinances for a reason. So I think we should also channel in on some of the positivity that's going on. So when we do have these positions getting filled, talk about them. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman. So we do have many members of the uh, group here tonight signed up to speak from the um, audience. And I just want to ask that we adhere to the five-minute rule, please. We're going to watch the timer, and the clerk's going to be in charge of the timer. So at this point, the first person signed up to speak is Joe McMiniman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, good evening, City Council. Good evening. We've been evening. at this for an hour and 20 minutes already, so, <laughs> you know, it's not great to be up here after all that. But... Um, and I'm not going to revisit all the statistics and the history that um, I went through two weeks ago, except for the fact that in year 2000, we had 100% of our employees residing within our city. And by 2016, we had lost 40% of our city employees and their families, their households. And so uh, it took a huge grassroots effort to turn that around and to get on the books what we have now. And without a sunset clause, uh, I'm, I'm very concerned that what happened in the year 2000 will happen all over again, and we'll have 40% or more. We're down to 30% uh, based on the numbers that I got a few months ago, um, directly. And you did a good job, by the way, analyzing everything, I, I thought. Um, so we were 40% outside the city in 2016. Now it's 30%. In 2016, when we got the ordinance in place, 57% of our firefighters were outside of our city. 57% were outside of our city. And so the real concern is losing that solid middle class uh, backbone 
of our city and the income that goes with it. So um, last time I talked about this, if the city payroll is 100 million and a third of our <coughs> employees now are outside the city, you know, that's $30 million leaving our city. But what I want to add to that is what do you think the total of our pension benefits is when you add up IMRF, police, fire, et cetera, it's close to $90 million. So if our residents um, put all that money together and now they're send it outside our city limits, you know, our taxpayers, um, that's money that's not circulating with our restaurants, our businesses, et cetera. And uh, so we, we lose economic vitality, we lose a lot more than that. Um, we're, we're really transferring our wealth outside the city. So I'm at uh, two minutes and 20, okay, I just wanna, you know, we talked a lot about where are we at with our hiring and so forth. And I agree that when the unemployment rate is 10%, you get a whole bunch more applicants in the door. But when, but when the unemployment rate is 4%, as you pointed out, Director, we're trying to um, recruit already hired people and, and encourage them to go for upward mobility with our city. And let's not forget that our median pay in our city is about $80,000 a year. Pretty soon, 25% of our employees will be making over $100,000 a year. We want that money circulating within our city. We've got strong competition out there outside of our city, those villages. We don't want to be subsidizing the growth of, all, of our competition, period. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, where are we at with our hired versus uh, open positions, that kind of thing. So. Alderman Turner and I, 10 years ago, we said we want a report from HR every month. And I don't know if you had a chance to put in your monthly report. So I looked at when I was sat in that seat there in February, my last report I got from the city for take utility out of it because you know we've retired four power plants so it's hard to measure what, what's happening within our utility. Uh, but as of February, our head count, our head count, was 846, 846. You know what it was 10 years earlier? A lower number. 10 years earlier, it was a lower number. It was 838. So everyone around here is saying, oh, we're short, we're short, we're short that. But these numbers don't lie. And I think there's some misinformation going on out here. And that's troublesome. What's going on here? I think. Alderman Rockford, you asked some good questions, I'm trying to pinpoint. So I think the better solutions are, okay, yeah, we've got a tight labor market, a tight housing market, give people two years to move in. That's particularly important to the married people that wanna come in. It's not so important for the single people because you, you can get an apartment. But give folks more time to move in. You know, historically, I, on our postings, okay, I'm out of time, time, but I would love to say more. Thank you, sir. Diane Howard. Good evening. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm here. First of all, I'm, I'm not looking for a city job. I'm not. I'm not looking. I have a job. I'm a homeowner here in Springfield. I've been, I'm born and raised in Springfield, Illinois. Just to give a little bit of background, my mother had nine children. All, well, seven of us graduated from Springfield Public Schools. Those children had 27. I have 27 nieces and nephews. Poof, uh, of the 27, seven of them are still living here. Of the 27, seven are still living in Springfield, 27. Of those 27, 22 have bachelor's degrees. You understand what I'm saying? Tw all 22 have applied to work with the city of Springfield, including myself. I'm a Navy veteran. I graduated cum laude with my bachelor's degree in law office administration, but the city of Springfield has thrown my application in the circular file for things that I was qualified for. This is disheartening. 
It's disheartening to hear that you feel you need to go outside of Springfield to find someone and they're here. They are here. You're not reaching out to them. They're at McDonald's. They're at Burger King. You ever heard about people with bachelor's degrees working in, 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 in low paying jobs? Because they are not given a chance here. Because you're not going by their education or their experience. You're going by who knows who. It's a long-standing tradition of Springfield, city of Springfield, only hiring those people who know somebody or was put forth by somebody. But I'm going to tell you like this here. You're wrong if you go outside of Springfield. If you want a, to be a city employee, you need to live here. You need to make sure that everything is being done right for your homeowners, your, your, uh, your schools. If you're not living here, you don't care. You can pretend to care just like you pretend to care on any other job, but you don't care for real unless it affects you. You like statistics, them are some, some statistics for you. You're running our families off. Every child that goes to Springfield Public Schools hopes that one day they can work for the city of Springfield. But the city of Springfield has a click going on, and it's been going on for years. You've been here three months. I hope you're changing it. You've been here six months. I hope you're changing it. But there's a click. It has nothing to do with your education or experience to work for the city of Springfield. That's my issue with you going outside of Springfield. You want to you wanna live in Jerome? Work in Jerome. Work for the city of Jerome. Make that better. They, they, that's wrong. There are too many young boys and girls, where they go? They live in Springfield that want these jobs, that need these jobs, that deserve these jobs. They deserve it. Springfield residents deserve to be able to work for their city, and they don't need to compete with somebody who doesn't live here. We live here. This is our city. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Next signed up to speak is Jenny Dahl. Hello, um, I'm Jenny Dahl, and I, I'm in Ward 7. Um, I could not have said it any better than the last speaker. And I, I totally 100% agree with her. I also am a lifelong resident of Springfield. I've lived on the southeast side growing up. I um, raised my family on the north end, and I currently live on the west end, and I... I love this town, and it, it seems to me as though I'm not hearing the council members and even the mayor be cheerleaders for our city like you would expect. At the end, after the discussion, it almost made me feel like, why do I live here? It's, is, the schools aren't good, the, the houses aren't good, it's just, it, it was sad. So that's, I appreciate having this chance to express my opinion, um, and as I said, I totally agree with the last speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next signed up to speak is George Tinkman. Tinkum, sorry. George, I might have said your name wrong there. Tinkum, I believe. It's pretty close. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Justin Mayor, I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me, what is it, George? Tinkum. Tinkum, there we yes. go. Yes. Thank you. I I could go on how the Celts uh, came up with that name, but uh, yeah, it's, it's another story. Gotcha. Good evening. It's good to see you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Councilman, Councilwomen. Thank you. Um, frankly, I, I was kind of uh, impressed with how you worked your way through all this tonight, and, and I, I like the idea of Ward uh, 7 uh, Councilman's uh, amendment, but there is uh, uh, extending this for a year having this moratorium for a year. One of the things I would point out, the difference between a uh, sunset provision and just revisiting, and that's basically burden of, uh, I, I call it burden of proof, but it, it's, it's the duty of the city council to make a change or not a change. 
if you don't have a sunset provision and the city council does nothing, then it just continues. If it's tabled, it continues. And a moratorium that is indefinite in length is a permanent change in the, uh, in the ordinance. And, and frankly, I, I think you're better served if you have a sunset provision where the city council has to actually go through the mechanism, mechanism of determining whether this needs to be continued. And if they can't justify continuing, then it's not continued. And it really does last only a year. I, I think that uh, uh, what we are, I think it was um, uh, Alderman Williams that uh, talked about uh, position specific. If we have a problem, address the problem. You know, you, you've got the, the baby, you've got the bath water, you know, just, you know, th throw, make the changes where you need to make the changes. As a matter of fact, the uh, existing ordinance talks about uh, a permanent waiver of uh, residency requirements. That's right on the books right now. Now, granted, it says uh, there has to be a showing of extreme hardship. I guess that could be extreme hardship for the individual applying for a job or an extreme hardship for the city itself. And the city council is the sole determiner of whether that uh, extreme hardship exists. You're in a position to do that right now with the existing language. So what I would suggest, and, and incidentally, as I understand it from uh, uh, looking over the, uh, the proposed language of the uh, amendment, here we go, is that this basically amends not just the, the numbers in uh, subsection E of the uh, of 36.05, but it also uh, changes the entire 36.05. And that would include uh, sub C that says any person employed by the city who shall move his residence outside the city limits, I'm paraphrasing, shall have, uh, shall submit his resignation or have his employment terminated. That's, that's a pretty big uh, change right there. If we just stick with E that talks about how long uh, waivers can exist and we go with the uh, suggested one year with a sunset provision so that you have to dig in and say, okay, we've got to justify it. If we can justify it after uh, one year, then we're going to continue it. Then I think we've got something. And I, I hope that you'd consider that. And it's, it's pretty hard for me to come up here and suggest an amendment, but basically that's what I'm asking you to consider. I think that will uh, serve a lot of people's uh, needs. And please just limit it to subsection E because that's all we're looking at uh, in terms of length of waiver. I've got another minute to rattle on, but uh, if, if there's any questions, uh, have at me. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. The next person signed up to speak is Aaron Guernsey. All right, thank you for having me tonight. My name is Aaron Guernsey. I'm the president of the Central Illinois Building and Construction Trades Council. Um, I'm going to make this brief. I won't even hit close to five minutes. but. There's a lot of good things going on in Springfield right now, and I disagree with some of the uh, discussion that was going on about the schools. You're building new schools right now. You're revamping schools right now, and that's what draws young folks to town. The jobs that are out there, I'm not saying that Springfield people couldn't fill them, but I think you should use this moratorium as more of a recruiting process to find people and bring them to the city of Springfield. Maybe it's not that you have to look at it as we have to close our doors to keep people here. Maybe you ought to open them up to bring people in. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next person signed up to speak is David Wells. David's not here. He's driving. Okay. Mr. Winkler, do you want to take his spot? Are you speaking? Okay. The next, the next person signed up to speak is Brad Shivey. <laughs> Sixteen fifteen North Dirksen Parkway, and I want to thank you for inviting me to the sleepover. This evening. <laughs> it's I don't know long. if I brought a pillow, but um, you know I, I've heard a lot of people talk about some things tonight about MOUs and contracts and where some of these things came from. But none of the people that spoke were in the room when I was negotiating with the city and how these things took place. 
it was disturbing at the time when we negotiated for the residency because it was driven by you know political promises at the time what was not discussed was unfunded liability of pensions it was talked about in here but it was never in the proposals years ago when they came it was just residency 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 because it had been promised not because it was good for the city because it had been promised now, I was in those rooms and have those proposals. And at that time, it wasn't about how do we increase individuals within the city working on these jobs. It was this is what was done and this is it. Matter of fact, it was the only proposal by the city in those collective bargaining agreement talks. So as you talked, uh, Alderwoman, about the MOUs and the organizations that agreed to it, most of us agreed to it under duress because it was the only proposal. So if it's the only proposal at that time, it'd be a tad bit disingenuous to say we can't agree with that, but let's talk about wages and a financial package. Some of the things that were passed at that time also, they had the same effect, was the 50% local workers. I think some people sold a, a red herring that it would increase minority participation. I don't think it did. Um, I would go buy jobs and see five or six people who worked from the city of Springfield or worked, lived here, and they all look like me. Then uh, we also put organizations in precarious situations because I would have individuals when I would dispatch men and women to these jobs that have Springfield resident, you know, they have a Springfield address. So I take Brad Carlson, I send him to a job and I find out that you live in a donut hole. So what have I done? I've taken Red Path Concrete, put them in a precarious situation where they could have liability, financial liability to the city by something that I did not mean to do and had no way to get around. So tonight, I'm not speaking as a person from labor, I'm speaking as an employer. In the last eight months, we've taken on 150 men and women. I'd put that against any industry in this community. We are having to do anything we can to get people. We're doing geofencing on Facebook, um, which, which brings in different um, communities to try and get where they know who we are. We're trying to do all of these different things. We're going to schools, we're going to institutions every single thing we can and we're failing we're failing we have so many jobs i was at a pre-job today they said we're going to want 120 brothers and sisters your organization how many do you have i said well i'll be here tomorrow but i'm it so the fact is we have to look at this pragmatic it's not politics it's if everything changed post covid i've been in this job title for over two decades never seen it the way it is today no matter what we do, no matter what we change in our testing and our interview process, we can't keep up. That's simple. So today's world, every hurdle, every hurdle that is in the way of increasing your opportunity of employment of people who are going to be employees and good for the city and paid for by the taxpayers, every hurdle must be removed. Residency is not a hurdle. It's a, land, it's, it's a minefield because it immediately stops people. I just had a job recently at Secretary of State. We had an individual who was gonna come in, take the job, can't, and I'll tell you why. We all bought houses at 2.9% financing and to buy a house now is 8%. Go change cars, see what it looks like now. A house is no different except it's exponentially more money. So it sounds great. I'm speaking today strictly by what is the reality of the labor market as someone who's increased our membership by 150 men and women. And we have over 1,400. Cities say the city has 2,000, we're not far from that. So we do know the trials and tribulations that you go through. All I would say is it can't be based on politics, it can't be um, based on promises, it has to be based on what can be achieved and what cannot be achieved. Today is different from the days before. Thank you for letting me speak and thank you for uh, letting me be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So at this point, the voting is now going to, we had a motion and a second and two amendments we passed. Right. So can I get a motion to move with the both amendments that were passed uh, as amended or whatever. Thank, motion to pass. Motion to pass <laughs> Person, thank you, Alderman. The Hanover. whole package.
package. For following my chain of thought. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's been a long and night already. It's important. <laughs> Yeah, the corporation counsel said, and whatever is what got you to the point that you followed <laughs> All right. me. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion and a second. Can I get uh, just a, I guess we're gonna put the voting will now be open clerk, let's go correct. So a motion to approve the ordinance with the two amendments. Alderwoman Conley, how do you vote? I vote yes. Okay. I'll let you call Seven it. Seven ayes and three nays, Mayor. Thank you, Clerk Lester. <clears throat> Thank you all for your time. The motion carries with seven voting yes, three voting no. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-495, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement with Springfield Area Arts Council for the purpose of City Arts, First Night Fireworks, and Mayor's Awards for the Arts and General Operations Support in an amount not to exceed $30,000 for the Office of the Mayor as amended. The Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-495 on final pass. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, discussion, I'll open it like I did before up to those in the horseshoe first before those in the chambers. Does anyone in the horseshoe have anything to speak on uh, this? I, my Alderman only Redcap. question is, is the, uh, where is this budgeted at? I can't hear her. I don't think it's on. She said Gen City 107. And what are, where is that out of? Did, did oh, the battery is dead. <laughs> I have to go to the podium. It's in Gen City 107. And that was budgeted last spring or just added? No, it was originally budgeted that way. Thank you. Any other persons in the horseshoe that want to speak on this particular? Okay, so we do have Sheila Walk signed up to speak. Good evening, all. Following that long and worthwhile discussion, let's take a moment and think of your favorite art, a painting, a photograph, a piece of music, a dance step, some art, and let your mind just go there for a moment. Especially think of how that art helped you through the pandemic when we were all home. And then take a breath. I work in Ward 2, I live in Ward 5, Accompanying to me tonight is Steve Rambeck, who is our Thanks board president, a longtime educator at Lanphier Thank High God School. You got me. I thank you for your attention to the Springfield Area Arts <laughs> Council. When I was here two weeks ago, I talked briefly about all the programs that we bring to the community, free, accessible, family friendly. We're a unique organization in that and in that we re-grant money to other organizations so that they can increase their arts programming. No one else in town does that. But there's more. The Springfield Area Arts Council, with a staff of one, is the Illinois State Representative at a national program, a poetry recitation contest for high school students. It's not someone from Chicago. It's not someone from the governor's office. It's someone from the Springfield Area Arts Council, headquartered blocks from this chamber. On the state level, the Springfield Area Arts Council hosted a statewide arts conference the first gathering of its kind post-pandemic that brought 500 people to this community, staying in our hotels, shopping in our local establishments, and eating locally also. The Springfield Area Arts Council was the only arts council in the state that had a voice in the selection of the state's 
Poet Laureate two years ago. The Springfield Area Arts Council was asked to bring to the attention of all artists, for-profit, non-profit sectors of our creative economy, a $50 million grant pool offered by the state of Illinois called the Back to Business Arts Grant. Locally, the Community Foundation for the Land of Lincoln gave the Springfield Area Arts Council money to give directly to musicians to play in local establishments when they felt safe to do so post-pandemic. We work with the county on selecting art for the new multimodal transportation system, the hub, as well as the, revive, the renewed county building. And we help the Hoagland Center for the Arts get a $1 million infrastructure grant to improve the heart of the arts in Springfield, the Hoagland Center. So while we offer all these programs, we do more. And your support at the municipal level helps us do that. And I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Ma'am. <coughs> so we have a motion and a second for the ordinance to be passed. Oh, Alderman Redpath, you have something else to say? I just want to say one thing. Um, in 2013, I was inducted into the Lamper High School Hall of Fame. Oh, Lord. But <laughs> there, there is an icon right there, Stephen Rambach, yes. who, who we all know, all of us Lamper guys know. And, he, and if he's for this, it's got to be okay. And thank you. Thank you for flunking him in that class, too. <laughs> He's a good man. I didn't realize the bar was that low. <laughs> Mr. Rambeck, I think you have a lot of graduates in this room. <laughs> so we have a first and a second. I think our discussion is now over with that. So the voting will now be open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. Alderwoman Conley, are you okay that I keep asking this? Yep. Okay. Yes, I vote yes. So the motion passes with 10 voting yes, none voting no. Thank you, Sheila. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-538, a resolution accepting a grant from the Illinois Housing Development Authority's Strong Community Program, round two for the Office of Public Works for emergency passage. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-538 on emergency passage. So moved. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this? Um, Alderman Ms. Gregory. Ms. Mayor, just a quick question. Um, yes, do, were we awarded um, funds in round one? So, in, in, that would in be a one. public works question here. Yes, sir, we were. Okay. It was about 410000 Uh The... The total, the estimated total to demolish <clears throat> the buildings that are on the list is about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so most of this in the first round went to demolishing structures and things it, of that it, nature. It, it, it all goes to demolishing okay. structures. I have a list uh, okay. with me if you'd like to take a look at that. No, it's sir, I see, current, I see uh, them every day. I appreciate y'all. Just wanted some clarification. Yes, Thank sir. you. Any other discussion? Okay, the voting will now be open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. Alderwoman Conley, how do you vote? I vote yes, Mayor, thank you. Uh huh. So the motion passes with 11 voting yes and none voting no. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-539, an ordinance authorizing execution of a program funding agreement with the Illinois Housing Development Authority, IDA, for the Strong Communities Grant Program for funds in the amount of $337,000 for the Office of Public Works for Emergency Passage. The chair will now entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-539 on emergency passage. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this one? Okay, seeing none, the voting will now be open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. Alderwoman Conley, how do you vote? I vote yes. Yep, so the motion passes with 11 voting yes, none voting no. The next item on the agenda thank is you. item, thank you, Director. 
The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-540, an ordinance authorizing grant number 24-0155 ORC from the State of Illinois Office of the, of the Attorney General in the amount of $155,000 for the Organized Retail Crime Grant Program and authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $155,000 for the Springfield Police Department for emergency passage. The chair will now entertain a motion to place agenda number 2023-540 on emergency passage. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this one? Seeing none, the voting will now be open. All those in favor of the motion, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. Alderwoman Conley, how do you vote? I vote yes. Oh, that motion passes with 11 voting yes, none voting no. The next item on the agenda is item number 2023-541, an ordinance amending Ordinance 477-10-23, ratifying fiscal year 25 health insurance premiums in the health benefit summary plan description for the City of Springfield active non-union and non-active retired participants for the Office of Human Resources for emergency passage. The chair will entertain a motion to replace agenda number 2023-541 <coughs> emergency passage. We'll move, Mayor. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, the voting will now be open. All those in favor, please vote yes. All those opposed, please vote no. Alderwoman Conley, how do you vote? I vote yes. The motion passes with 11 voting yes, none voting no. Is there any unfinished business to bring before the council from the horseshoe? None. Is there any new business to come before the council? Yeah, Mayor. Alderman Rockford. Um, one, one question. Um, my understanding we had some an incident at the Lincoln Library a week or so ago with the homeless death. On the weekend? Yes. Um, hopefully in the, in the future we're made aware of this. Um, I heard, I had one of my uh, people in my ward call and ask about it and I had no, no idea. Okay. So please in the future. Noted. Will Thank do. you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alderwoman Purchase. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Corporation Council. We spoke two weeks ago on an ordinance that I had removed, and we talked about having a working group where you brought up to speed on that to see how we could do this as a horseshoe. Yes. Yeah, so we would need um, it would need to be three. Any any more than three, we would we would start to get into uh, the Open Meetings Act um, Open Meetings Act issues. So uh, the the mayor could appoint that working group. I I was trying to follow on the video, and it seemed like a lot of people wanted to be involved. Um, so I'm happy to work with you, and if if everybody who said they wanted to be involved uh, still wants to be involved, then I would recommend a working group with myself and maybe one point person and then a couple other groups that could all meet um, to, to discuss it. That way everybody's involved, um, so we could have you know meetings three on one, um, so everybody has their input and then see what, uh, what works together. So however you want that to look, that's, that's how it would need to be structured. I might also suggest that you have a conversation with Alderwoman Conley because she made a suggestion that the working group be part of the Public Meetings Act and that more than three were there. So can you talk to her and see what your wishes are first? Okay. That would be good. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Alderman Gregory. Just a quick follow-up um, on, on that particular group. You know, I, I definitely want to be a part of it, um, you know, representing the ward that I do with who, who experiences this uh, quite often. Um, but but I think you know rather than having a, you know one offs and little small groups and stuff, I think this is an important topic that we've visited several several times, uh, even since our new mayor has been here. And I think um, you know we we may need to look at a special meeting where we all can be here and we all can craft something and we all can make the adjustments to the current order ordinance um, rather than being split off because at times it's it's, it's hard to. Um, you know, understand what Alderman Redpath is saying if he's not there, if we're not talking directly and, and vice versa, um, because we all have different views, you know, based on where we're coming from and, and what we see every day. And I, I think, you know, we limit it to, you know, maybe an hour or, or two or whatever. But um, I, I think that's a good way. Um, therefore, the public can come in and um, have their have their uh, thoughts and, and, and we'll be transparent and we can move on and, and hopefully fix this these issues once and for all. Okay. Alderman Redpath. Uh, yeah, I agree with Alderman Gregory to a point, but I think that it's important that we get it up off the ground, and then we're going to probably bring it back to the committee of the whole. Uh, it is, is probably the proper procedure. That way we uh, have a base, and 
if Alderman Gregory needs to be part of it. I know Alderman Connolly wants to be involved, Alderman Purchase. If they want that three, it's okay with me. If other people want to be involved, I don't know how you're going to do that, but obviously the Open Meetings Act is, is a problem. So, um, but we need a base. We need a base to know exactly where we're going. And that, I think between those three, they, they can come up with some ideas and then bring it back to us as a committee the whole, I think is probably the proper procedure. I'll let you talk to all the women Conley need to meet. Okay. Awesome. Um, for new business, I just want to bring your attention to something exciting that's going on in the city of Springfield on Friday. Um, and I'm going to pretend to know what I'm talking about for a moment. A gentleman by the name of The Mountain from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I've never watched it. I asked if it was a video game, I hate to say. <laughs> My communications director, Haley Wilson, was severely disappointed in me. <laughs> um, but he's going to be in Springfield on Friday at the Coliseum at the fairgrounds um, at 11 a.m. There's going to be a press conference, and there is a historic medieval tournament coming to Springfield for the weekend at the Coliseum, and he's going to be there um, so you can meet the mountain. And um, there is a – our communications director put something on our Facebook page about it. You can see a video where he even – talks about being in Springfield, and he's from Iceland. He's an Icelandic man. You can tell from his accent, but he's going to be in Springfield. It's very cool, so I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Winter is coming. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a Game of Thrones reference. <laughs> All right, so citizens who have signed up to address the council, the first citizen is Hakeem Lukman. I would like to address one issue that I've been having between the city and the county. My property, I have three lots over on North 3rd. Two of the lots is county. One is city. And it's kind of weird when you have a city employee that wants to address county issues or the county wants to address the city issues. And you, you know, how can we, how can we uh, come together and say, okay, this is your territory <coughs> and this is your territory. You know, with your employees. Well, you can annex into the city, the other two properties. No. I'll annex it to the county before I go to the city. On your own. Good luck with that. <laughs> Is that but, all you have, sir? But it, at this point in time, okay, because there's two, there's a conflict between the city and the county issues on my properties right there. Okay. Now, the other issue is I want the city to back off for until after the court hearing of the lawsuit that I have against the city of Springfield, CWLP, and the water department for burning down my house. Until after that, then we can discuss what else is going on about that. That's all I want to say. I want the harassment and everything to, to stop. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. The next person signed up to speak is Alice Ramey. She's holding her head. Thank you, Alice. One more week. Make you feel taller, does it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> really tall now. 
<laughs> you know. Uh, am I still got two minutes and 28 seconds? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll leave seven minutes, though. <laughs> it's okay. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, I've been at the Capitol all day, and I believe Ward 2 can tell you I was. Um, I've heard a lot of disillusions over there, and some of them that don't know what they're talking about, too, as you know, and you go through them. <clears throat> but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the trees, you know, the trees that are doing the gumballs and the walnuts. My driveway at one time was all driveway, pretty white, you know, ready to go. Now it's half black, half white, and half purple. So I think maybe I might keep it that way because a lot of people like it that way. But I want to thank two people very, very closely. One, I want to thank Public Works. You did what you said you were going to do, and thank you. That's what we need here. Okay. <laughs> And the other person is the chief. Which one? <laughs> Who's the Charles said that. Uh, the chief is, um, did something for me that a lot of people don't know about, and it helped me out a lot. He showed me how I can cut down the trees, and it would still be legal, okay? <laughs> still be legal, all right? And I want to thank you for that. And your nine months. <laughs> and your nine one. As long as it's in your yard. Uh, nine one dispatch when my when I had my heart attack uh, was one of the best I have ever had. My sister said he asked very point questions. He wasn't hostile. He wasn't loud. He was very soft. Uh, this is the first time that I had a doctor that was in residence at Memorial on the ambulance. And it was nice to know that there was someone there because I was not there. In the, I was in the ambulance, but I wasn't there. I had passed out. And he was there to take care of me. That's what I think every ambulance needs. And please get rid of life strike. Please. I don't care what you have to do. I know several people that will help you blow it. But, I mean, seriously, we need that. We need it taken care of because the next-door neighbor had the life strike, and she told me it was the worst thing that she ever experienced. So we need to bring it up to stiff, okay? Mr. Redpath, thank you. Thank you, And I have two, two minutes and 25 seconds, so she did add the five. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Alice. The next person signed up to speak is Pastor Lavasha Hemingway. Lovatia, sorry about that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Lavatia Hemingway. Um, a lot of you guys probably know my brother-in-law, which is Larry Hemingway. He does a lot of work throughout the city and things of that sort. However, I am here because, um, as you can see tonight, I brung a lot of youth with me. We run an at-risk program over on um, 1221 South 15th Street, and a lot of the information that I have seen that come across uh, in news articles concerning this R3 grant, we have applied for that grant. And I just wanted to come here and let you know what that grant would mean for us and, and my at-risk children. We me and my husband, which is Pastor James Hemingway, we left town, but God has called us back here, so we bought a church December 16, 2022. Since that time, we have fully remodeled, took our own money, retirement money, and all of our savings and credit cards, remodeled this facility, state-of-the-art facility, as much as we can do in this small building. However, um, even with this small building, there is no room in the building to um, have a, a area to really feed the children. So we put like picnic tables and it worked for a while, right? That money that we applied for, our children 
eat outside right now. It's getting cold. I don't know what's going on with the R3. This is, again, our first year back home. Um, but we come to invest in Springfield. We have invested over $350,000 of our own money. I am asking that you guys help. We have secured um, a building at 1405 Laurel Street. That, our three money will help put our children back in the building. Within two months, we done already fed, given out over a thousand meals are from this at-risk program, which is funded through the USDA. So I don't know what the holdup is with everything that's going on, but what I do come here to be is an ally. I need friends of all of you guys to help, because. What am I supposed to tell my children? That, that was only half of the kids. I serve over 30 something families every day. Just got improved to also feed them on Saturday and Sunday because we ran such a great program in such a short period of time. Within our facility as well, I am working with farmers to bring fresh food, meats, and products that inside of the church, we have a market in the back that we can sell produce, meats, everything, and able to accept EBT link, all forms of payment for the people right inside of that red square that we that those R3 funds are supposed to serve. I cannot continue to have these children eating outside. I cannot continue to have them being, it's getting really cold. So the thing about it is I am here to fight for my, the babies the people that's supposed to be really benefit from that R3. So I'm asking if I am also willing to put Father's House on the line to be an example of how these R3 funds are supposed to be. So I want to work with you. I want to work with all of you guys. I don't know, part of my background, I work in healthcare and I build surgery centers. So I have budgets of $10 million budgets that I have to buy instrumentation for doctors and stuff. So I know how to write policies and procedures. If you need help, I can help you with those things. So that's what I come here today to say, I wanna be your help, I wanna be your friend. What can we do so this money is not held up and it's not taking resources away from the people that really need it? That's what I'm here for. So I will tell you two things. I believe Director Yazel is still here. I can't really see from where I'm sitting. Okay, have you spoken to Director Yazel, who's I the have, Director um, of Economic Development? Okay, so I did a um, presentation with Doug and Julie concerned uh, with- uh, Oh, about Julia Kay. Yes, yeah, I, so I have not went up to you yet, but I have been that over there- That would be your step before us. Yes. So if you can w speak with her, and then if you're done with her, you can talk to the HR director, uh, Nikki Baker, because she would talk to you about coming to work at Economic Development. And I would, I would love to. <laughs> so I that would, would be two to. birds, one stone. I would love to. I would love to. And I worked with your brother-in-law. You know, my brother. <laughs> so I, I would love to um, um, do that, but. So both of those ladies can talk to you. Can help me. Yes, Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh -huh. Is there anybody else in the audience that wishes to address the council? Motion, second. we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, motion, we are adjourned. Thank you. Pardon me. He's not here, so. I mean, I know what he looks like. Should I have said it out loud? If I knew Don Henry and wasn't here, I'd have to say it.